Welcome back everybody. My name's Laura Watson and in this video I'm going to show you the process I take to paint these beautiful snowdrops. I start out by transferring my drawing onto my watercolor paper from tracing paper. I draw right onto tracing paper so I can erase easily and then I scribble graphite on the back of the drawing or the back of the tracing paper and then put it on top of the watercolor paper and draw over top to transfer a faint outline that I can then paint. I still use a kneaded eraser to remove some of the excess graphite before painting. Let's get right into the mixing of the colors. I'm mixing up some very neutral grays and then some different tones of green. So I'm making some really bright greens, mid-tone greens, and then also some darker greens. One of my tricks for making a really nice dark green is to add neutral tint or Payne's gray to whichever green mix I'm making. And it's a great way to create more contrast. So I'm starting off right away with step one of my three-step painting method and to do that I'm just creating base shapes first with wet on dry washes and I'm using a pretty small brush here because these are smaller petals and I don't want to paint them all gray. When you paint white flowers on white paper you really are just painting in the shadows and the reserved white of the paper is the white of the petal. So you can see here I switched to a bit of a larger brush just because it's a larger petal and I want to get that nice fluid watercolor look. So I've just slowed my brush down here so you can see how I'm blending out that little bit of color, dragging it into the wetter area that I've created with a clean damp brush and then just sort of agitating the color out so that it blends nicely into basically a little grated wash. If you're new to my channel, then you probably haven't heard of the three-step painting method. This is a method I created and it's how I create my paintings and it helps me know where to start and which steps and techniques to use next when I'm painting. If you'd like to learn more, you can join me for a completely free online workshop where I teach you how to paint this wild rose with all of the details and steps shown. You can sign up via the link in the video description below and it is completely free. And you can also learn in this workshop things that you can do to become a more confident botanical painter yourself. I give you a little bit more information on the workshop at the end of this video, so stay tuned. So how do you decide which size of brush to use for your painting? Well, it really depends on what area you're painting and what technique you're using. So because I am painting a white flower, I'm being a bit more careful about not over painting the gray. So sometimes I'm using that smaller brush, but now I'm switching to the leaves and I'm using a nice quick sort of one stroke um, method here for creating the base shape of the leaves. This is just the base shape. So they will look more detailed once we're done. Um, so you have to have faith in your method and your process, but I'm basically just using the belly of the brush and the tip of the brush with different pressures and then different concentrations of paint. So the same hue or color of paint, but uh, mixed up stronger and then watered down. And this is how you really get a beautiful watercolor effect and create a painting that looks really nice in less time without having to paint every single detail um, and still have it look a realistic enough. Sometimes I find paintings that use watercolor paint to use um, creating, trying to create realism um, with every single detail. Sometimes they end up looking a little overpainted and you lose the beautiful watercolor um, sort of organic look. So this is my approach to try and create some realism, stick with botanical painting style, but also um, really let the watercolors shine as well. So now I'm on step two. You can see I just added the veins in the center of the leaves. And then I'm just actually starting now on step three on the stems. And this is just adding contrast. So wet on dry and then blending out my little washes. And you want to create a lot more contrast than you would think. So I always exaggerate the contrast in my painting compared to what my reference photo looks like. 
And again, so these are some stylistic choices that I've figured out work for me with my style of painting so that I can create botanical paintings and not spend, you know, hours and hours on them. I certainly have done that with my um, training. I did do a um, botanical painting diploma with the Society of Botanical Artists in the UK, which is very formal and more of botanical illustration. Um, but for my practice and my real life, I have a, a baby at home and, you know, a family and other things that I do. So I don't have that much time to spend. And I really just want to create more paintings as I'm so passionate about painting with watercolors and all the plants that come out throughout the year, especially right now in spring. So now you can see this slowed down section here of me doing step three. So wet on dry, painting that paint on, the rinsing and dabbing the brush and then blending it out. And this is something I call the dip dab method. And if you want to know more about these details, again, you uh, can sign up for my Wild Rose class and I go into way more detail and explain everything. Um, but I wouldn't be able to do that because um, the video would end up being way too long to put on YouTube. So again, that link is in the description below. Now what I'm doing is I'm refining my painting. So I'm actually taking a synthetic chisel brush and I'm just using clean damp water and a paper towel and lifting out a little bit of color. Um, and you can see if you do want to take this course, um, there is a full length class on this as well on my website and you can check that out also linked below. But again, if you're not ready to commit to purchasing a course, then you can try the Wild Rose for free. Um, so with white flowers, it can be very easy to overpaint them. And that's why I use the chisel brush just to lift out some color. And now I'm sort of jumping back to my step two process of adding a few more contour lines and a little bit of texture. So just making sure that I get a bit more dimension before finishing off with um, the sort of sculpting and shaping process in step three where things really come to life and you get more 3D form. So here's the finished painting. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and I hope that you are inspired to try and create something similar. What's your favorite spring flower to paint? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching the preview of my snowdrop class. If you'd like some more information on the Wild Rose Workshop, which you can sign up for via the link below in the video description, then stay tuned. Join me for a free one hour class and learn how to paint a wild rose in watercolor. My name's Laura Watson and I'm the founder of the Watercolor Garden. In this class, I'm going to show you how to simplify botanical painting with my three-step painting method so you can improve your paintings in as little as 30 days. I'm going to show you how to paint this wild rose from start to finish, step by step, mixing up the colors, laying out your drawing, and getting started with the painting. Watercolor botanical painting doesn't have to be overwhelming. With my three-step method, we start by laying in our base shapes. Then we add in contour lines and veins and finish off with wet on dry washes to build up contrast and form. I'm going to show you how I use time-saving techniques to create full botanical style paintings in much less time. This class is part of the Watercolor Garden, which is my online watercolor painting school. By learning my three-step painting method and some tips and techniques that go along with it, you'll be able to transform your botanical paintings in no time at all. Students in the Watercolor Garden have seen big improvements in their paintings in as little as 30 days, and even larger transformations in their painting skills and results in 90 days. I hope that you enjoy this class and find my three-step painting method helpful so that you can achieve your botanical painting goals. You can sign up for this free workshop by hitting the link in the video description below.